Richard Feynman was one of the most popular physicists of the late 20th century. He was a Nobel Prize winner for his work on quantum electrodynamics. His Feynman lectures are still some of the most popular physics textbooks. And his autobiography, Surely You're Choking, Mr. Feynman, was an international bestseller. He was a very colorful character, especially for a physicist, famous for his antics like safe cracking or playing bongo drums. Uh, he was a junior scientist in the Manhattan Project, he invented a new formulation of quantum mechanics, and he was on the Challenger Commission in the 1980s. In the past year, I stumbled over several offhand mentions on social media of Feynman being an abuser or even a predator. And I thought to myself, huh, I should look into that sometime. And this sometime was a few weeks ago. Now, first up, I was unsure whether I should do this video in the first place, because strictly it's not about physics. And I generally want to stay away from cultural or political topics on this channel, as these are almost always an absolute dumpster fire. Then again, the reason why these are such a dumpster fire is because they are left to the loudest and least competent people. So I decided, when culture barges into my world of physics and science, I should absolutely comment on it. So, let's talk about how problematic Feynman was. I brought the receipts. Accusation. Feynman thought that women are bitches and he had the mindset of a pickup artist. In one chapter in Surely You're Choking, Feynman is stranded in Albuquerque for a summer and ends up spending a lot of time in bars trying to chat up women. Without much success. And then he meets a man that teaches him a way to pull these bar girls by being dismissive and rude to them and looking down on them as being bitches. And that's what he tries and he talks himself into this mindset, so he drops words like bitch a couple of times in this chapter. I think the main point here is that this episode was some sort of social experiment for Feynman and he was quite intrigued by it. It is also spelled out very clearly that this way of thinking was very alien to him and he had to force himself to do it. Eventually he dislikes this method and doesn't adopt it. I do agree that this chapter sticks out in an otherwise more wholesome book and it may disturb younger and or female readers. For this reason, I would even agree that Surely You're Choking would be a better book uh, entirely without this chapter. But trying to paint him as this kind of guy is really insincere because the entire point of this chapter was that he wasn't like that and couldn't be like that. Accusation. Pretending to be a student to get laid. In another chapter in Surely You're Choking, Feynman is a young professor at Cornell in his late 20s and goes to social dancing events at his university to meet girls. The problem was that he looked so young, remember, still in his 20s, that none of the girls believed he was a professor and thought he was a liar. So eventually, he refused to answer any age-related questions and ended up with two girls who were convinced he was a freshman, comforting him that that's quite all right. He finally did let them know, and they left, upset. Now, this one strikes me as even more odd. And, uh, I mean, I would get the point if it were the other way around, if a student pretended to be a professor, because there's a power structure attached to that. But this way around, it's like shedding all of this power that you might have as a professor over students. As to the fact whether Feynman as a professor should have attended the event in the first place, I have no information on who the event was for, just students or also faculty. Today, there would probably be somewhat of a strict separation, and I agree that this is probably for the better. But again, this is such a nothing burger that I, I, I don't get why people would bring it up in the first place. Accusation. He was a predator because his wife was much younger than him. Okay. Feynman was married three times. Um, his first wife died, 
His second marriage was a complete failure and was divorced after a short time. And his uh, third marriage lasted until his death. His first wife, Arlene, was one year younger than him. His second wife, Mary Louise, was one year older than him. And his third wife, Gwyneth, was 16 years younger than him. Yes, that is an unusually large age gap. And I'm certainly not a fan of grown-up men dating teenage girls, but he was over 40 at this point and his wife was 26 when they married. Okay, so at what point exactly do we treat adults as adults and let them make their own decisions? Accusation. He abused his wife. Feynman's second marriage to Mary Louise Bell was short-lived and obviously troubled. It lasted less than four years and ended in a two-year-long drawn-out divorce. Feynman's FBI file included the following passage, quote, His ex-wife reportedly testified that on several occasions when she unwittingly disturbed either his calculus or his drums, he flew into a violent rage during which he attacked her, threw pieces of bric-a-brac about and smashed the furniture. Um, this is wrong. I just figured out that it should say choked and not attacked. Um, it was misquoted in the article that I used and I just read the original FBI files where it says choked. This would also impact my comment later about vague language. Uh, this isn't vague. None of his family, friends, kids or other spouses mentioned anything like this, but it could of course be true within his second marriage, which allegedly brought out the worst in both parties. I'm somewhat unsure about this point because uh, the wording is rather vague and the source is his ex-wife, who absolutely hated his guts at that point and wanted as many reasons for a divorce as possible. So. Does that mean that you can simply dismiss everything? No. So, I don't know. Accusation. Many of his nude models were his students. Feynman picked up drawing and painting at one point in time and also drew a large number of nudes. This also includes a student, quote, The next girl I met that I wanted to pose for me was a Celtic student. I asked her if she would pose nude. Certainly, she said, and there we were. It isn't specified whether she was his student, and the formulation a Caltech student implies otherwise, but we cannot know for sure either way. That is the one thing I agree is problematic, and it certainly wouldn't be allowed today, and it shouldn't be. Even if this was just a Caltech student and not a student of his, posing nude is not something that should happen between a student and a professor. So to sum up, a lot of nothing, um, but some points that are at least questionable. So, was Feynman a misogynist? Did he hate or disdain women? Well, not his colleagues, sister, daughter or wives. With the possible exception of his second wife, but that was not because of her gender, but because of her character, which was strongly at odds with his. In the end, all the evidence that remains is some rude words in one chapter of one of his books, which is the definition of reaching. Was Feynman a feminist or ally? No. He was a somewhat regular man of his time, mainly the 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s. He did have some progressive notion, like supporting his sister to go study, but all in all, a man of his time. Now, if you want to fault people for living in earlier times, that's your prerogative, I guess. If it makes you feel superior, go ahead. But what irks me, and it irks me a lot, is the straight up dishonest way these accusations were made, based on little to nothing. Framed in the worst possible language and just thrown out there with the hope that people wouldn't question and just something would stick. And it irks me because the discussion about misogyny and harassment in academia is an important one and must be had, especially as professors hold almost total power over their students and this enables exploitation. 
But why then? Why base this discussion on one of the worst possible examples? Fine man. Why artificially inflate this case when there are heaps of more striking examples? Einstein was terrible to his wives and kids and Schrödinger, let's not even start. So why fine man of all people? There is a big danger in inflating claims and uh, problematizing everything. If everything is harassment, nothing is. If a term is stretched and stretched and stretched, in the end it doesn't mean anything anymore. It loses all of its meaning. And when you're caught making weak cases, then all of your other cases will also be assumed to be weak and be dismissed. So making these kinds of accusations don't just not help your cause, they actively hurt it. When you're thinking about something you don't understand, you have a terrible, uncomfortable feeling called confusion. It's a very difficult and unhappy business. And so most of the time, you're rather unhappy, actually, with this confusion. You can't penetrate this thing.